Okay, so last lecture, we uh, stopped at this uh, dehydration of ethanol uh, problem. Uh, ethanol, as you can see, it's got a, a, it's well known that it's got an azeotrope that occurs around 90%. And, um, and often you want to have ethanol without any water in it, as pure ethanol, to try and get up to that point. And there are various ways of doing it. Um, uh, one of the one of the ways is using molecular sieves, uh, because you can preferentially put uh, uh, absorb water through the pores of a, of a molecular sieve, uh, whereas the ethanol would be too large to go into those pores. So by good selection of your um, molecular sieve, you can you can actually remove the ethanol in that way. But then you've got a then you've got your water adsorbed on the molecular sieve and the desorption is just a little bit clumsy because it's a solid material so it has to be heated up uh, and then there's heat transfer problems um, involved in getting the heat into a solid packed bed for instance. Okay so Let's have a look how we will do this with uh, distillation and liquid liquid extraction. So here we've got a feed from a distillation uh, from a fermentation. And uh, so fermentation is a is the most common source of making ethanol um, from from sugars. Uh, okay, sure the it won't be as much as a 20% ethanol uh, concentration, be 15 or 10 percent further down on this thing, but for the purposes of this illustration, it doesn't really matter where it lies, as long as it is considered a binary. Oh, yes, I'm talking. Ah. Oh, so is it only the one everybody can hear? Okay, that's great. Except the one person, let me just see who that is. Uh, yeah, Beatrix. You, you, you'll have to see what's wrong on your, on your equipment. Okay, let's carry on. Um, so this is a binary mixture of ethanol and water, and, and that's the main thing about this thing. And then if we look at at this idea of using toluene as an entrainer, we use toluene because it is fairly nonpolar and therefore it is going to form a liquid liquid equilibrium uh, with water. Now we did this in one of the opening lectures. <laughs> Earphones broke. Whoops. Uh, we did this in one of the opening lectures. Um, uh, but that was a TXY diagram. And then what we would have with a liquid liquid equilibrium is that the lines would would go would go horizontally. So you would have a line that runs horizontally across there because it would all occur at the same temperature. If you've got these these two phases of liquid in your separating funnel, they would be at the same temperature. So you definitely have a horizontal line there. Now this line over here represents one temperature and uh, it is usually a low temperature call it 40 degrees c uh, because you will use cooling water to get your mixture down to that temperature and the lines that join the tire lines across here are not necessarily horizontal so if you have let me draw a tire line in uh, not that one a line. If we draw a tire line in, it might go from here to here. And that means that on the organic phase, oops, going back to the to the pointer, on the organic phase, you will have this ternary composition. On the aqueous phase, you would have this ternary composition. And this would be the most, uh, the dense, densest. It would be at the bottom of the of the decanter, 
because it, it because usually with a normal organic such as toluene, uh, water will have a higher density than than an organic material, and certainly it has a higher density than ethanol. So, so this organic this aqueous phase is going to lie at the bottom of the ferment. It'll be more dense than the organic phase. Okay, so that is, I'm going to remove that now, uh, erase. So that's the first thing you, that's the, that's the reason that we were going to try toluene, that we're going to try toluene as an end trainer. Um, so, the next thing we're going to have a look at is what distillation can we use? Because we've got a feed that, that is not, it's not going to uh, break into two uh, liquid phases. It's outside of this envelope down here. This envelope encompasses everything below. If you've got a, if you've got a feed that goes to a decanter that's anywhere in this, in this region here, uh, that will go into a liquid liquid. Uh, two liquid phases. This one cannot. Okay, so we're going to have to use distillation. And let's have a look at the distillation boundaries. We are in a boundary that runs, let's start in the middle here, that runs from here. Then you've got the arrow pointing up to that azeotrope. And then down this way, across here. And back up there. That is the boundary that this feed lies in. So if we're starting with that feed, there is a boundary that we we, we cannot escape that boundary, and that is where the problem lies because that means we can't get to pure ethanol. We can only get to that azeotrope of ethanol up there, 251.2k. Okay. So we also note that this is a low boiling azeotrope. It is an unstable node. Everything moves. All the arrows move away from this node here. And there's the stable node, water. Right, so that is a distillation boundary. There are three distillation areas. This, this is another area. And we need to get into that area. And we would have to distill within this area because we cannot get to pure ethanol using a liquid-liquid separation. Uh, that liquid-liquid separation can only give us toluene and water or a, an aqueous phase and a non-aqueous, an organic phase. So we need to get a mixture that lies inside this area. Uh, only then can we actually distill. And then after that, we would like to get into this area below the liquid-liquid equilibrium line. So we can go to uh, this distillation boundary. This, this is another, the third distillation area. So there is one two, and three. So if we can get to this point by distillation, then we can put that mixture into a liquid liquid, a decanter, and we can make that separation and do the line four, going from there to there. Right, so now we're starting to see, simply because we've got a graphical method, we can see how we can sort of feed, and clearly you'd be able to make pure water from that feed, and you'd be able to make on the distillate, you'd be able to make pure uh, this, uh, ethanol water azeotrope. And then we want to get into this distillation area. And now you can see, I'm going to get my uh, line drawing. If we mix that azeotrope with pure toluene, So we mix pure, uh, wait, let's get back to the pointer. We're mixing pure toluene 
with this azeotrope, the amount that we mix, we can choose so that we land up in the middle of this of this distillation area. And if we choose that right, let me try a shape ellipse. If we choose that right, that it's mainly that azeotrope. Oh, gee, no, that's not what I'm trying to do. Oh, only if I can move it. Let's try that. Oh, ooh, ooh. I can't move. Ooh, can I move it? I don't think so. Oh, oh, there we go. Yeah, baby. Right. There we go. So if we mix those two and we land up at that position over there, we'd be able to distill. Um, and I'm going to get another line. Change the color, and we'd be able to distill from B2 to make, well, let's distill from uh, making a line. Oh, right. so I've got a text tool here. Yes, I've got a text tool here. A line tool, and it's red. Okay, so we'd be able to distill uh, with the uh, distillate being at, at the 347 ternary azeotrope going through that through that feed point and we'd be able to make pure ethanol and if we the position if we choose the position of that mixture correctly we would be able to make the dis the distillate um, uh, lie inside the liquid liquid region Okay, so let me put in the the first um, the first distillation that we had. Uh, color uh, green. That was a distillation that went from B one up to up to that azeotrope. So there's a distillation column. Uh, we're mixing with some pure toluene to make that stuff. Distilling that, and we're landing up with our liquid liquid. If we cool this, if we cool this mixture down, oh, da, 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 da. point. Uh, we're landing up uh with this ternary azeotrope and if we cool this mixture down because we have to cool it down from 347k where it's boiling and we cool it down to uh 40 degrees c um then we would be able to make a separation and i'm going to choose another line and another color uh which is going to be uh which is going to be orange. And we can make that liquid liquid separation once we cool it down. And go over there. Okay. So when we've made this liquid liquid separation, this thing, ah, uh, right, let me get my answer again. This stuff over here is very close to being toluene that's it's mainly toluene that's in that stream and we can still mix this stuff this stream we can still mix with that stream and land virtually at the same point okay so now we're talking about the recycles we recycle this instead of putting in pure toluene we 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 use this stream to mix with the ethanol trope, we can still achieve uh, moving into that distillation region exactly where we were. Similarly, if we mix this stream with the feed, we're going to get something that lies very close to that feed um, where, the, where the pointer is at the moment. And instead of, instead of achieving that separation, we're going to achieve separation that lands us about there 
But that's still okay, because if we mix this with that, we can still get mixture that lies on this red line and still have the same distillation occurring. Okay, so let's go and have a look at the this this represents all of those mixtures so here we've got our feed and and now we can start putting that on a diagram there we've got our feed there we've got s1 which is the densest part of this decanter the aqueous stream that comes from that decanter is s1 We're mixing s1 with f and the lever and the lever arm rule says that we're going to get a mixture that lies on a straight line up between those two m1 so there is the mixture of the feed with the aqueous phase from the decanter and we get a mixture m1 from m1 because water is a is a um, stable node we can make pure water from there and we can make D1. So there's D1 as a distillate, and water is coming out as a pure stream. D1, we needed to mix with toluene, but instead of mixing with toluene, we're mixing with this toluene rich mixture, S2. So remember, S1 and S2 are the products of the decanter. So let's go up to the Flow diagram, there's S2, toluene rich. We're mixing it with D1. And when we mix those two together, S2 and D1, we get M2. And we're choosing to mix the amounts, the amounts that we mix, so that we lie directly in a line between pure ethanol and this point that is in the liquid liquid uh, equilibrium zone. And that is that. You can see now from a diagram, the diagram points us to what we must do to, to achieve, to actually get from one distillation zone to another. So we are getting from from this original distillation zone, we're getting into this distillation zone by distilling up to D1. And then we know to get into that distillation zone, we need to mix with toluene. And by mixing, we can get into a second distillation zone. Now we're in the distillation zone at the right point. We can distill, make the distillate, make the bottoms product, the bottoms product, <laughs> Sorry, distillate because all the arrows are moving away from there. There's the bottoms product. The distillate we want to cool down. So there we have distillate. We need to cool it down so that we get a we get two liquid phases. We separate those in a decanter. Note the icon for a decanter. Uh, there's always a mark allocated in tests to show that you've cooled it down before you take it into the decanter. There's a mark allocated for recognizing that the organic phase is usually the, the less dense phase and it is coming from the top of the decanter. Aqueous phase comes from the bottom of the decanter. And you can see then that using a diagram, it makes it quite obvious how to synthesize a brand new process brand new separation process you know exactly where you must go on this diagram knowing your distillation boundaries the best you can do is to get to d1 to get into the next distillation column you've got to mix with a toluic mixture you know where you want to go along that line so that you can make pure ethanol and go as deep into the liquid liquid uh, separation zone as possible. Yes, Jaco Louis. Um, so how do you um, decide where D1 must be? Because you can vary that by just mixing various amounts of S1 and F. 
do, is there a couple of heuristics to make sure you mix the right amount, or is it a trial and error, error thing? It's, it's, you don't have any choice in this particular case. Um, but you must remember that once you've got the feed and you made a set, the first separation, you've already reduced the molar flow rate of the components because you've taken off most of the water. I mean, the amount of water that's on this section is, is very little. It's this distance from there to there compared to this distance from there to there. So already, by the time you get up here, you've, you've, removed, you've removed most of the water. And therefore, the flow rates are getting much less. And now, when you make this separation, you've taken away the ethanol, most of the ethanol, uh, by going up there. So by the time you get here, the molar flow rates are already quite small. Now, you've, now you have those molar flow rates by making this the two liquid phases. And so the molar flow rate of S1, let's just go to where S1 is uh, on the decanter. That molar flow rate there is much smaller than the molar flow rate of the feed. So you can expect this to be very close to the feed. Uh, and, okay. and that's typically going to be the way it will work in most of these sort of cases. So I think this one has been exaggerated because here yeah, they're showing it like one third, two thirds. So there's one third of S1 and two thirds of F. So that's pretty much exaggerated just to make it clear on the diagram. So D1 will probably lie further up on the thing. But as you can see, it doesn't really make much difference where D1 lies over here. Where once you mix with the toluene, uh, you, you, you're still going to do the same separation. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, what a more difficult question is how do you how do you make sure that you mix that the flow rates of D1 and S2 that you don't really have control over the flow rates of those two how do you ensure that that the flow rates are such that you get you get M2 and that would have been a much more difficult question to answer <laughs> so um, yes uh, you can you can make a comment Dr. Louis uh, no, that, that that makes sense. So you kind of have to know how much toluene you have in the system to like get a, an idea of how far those lines would be. But yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I'm sure that you can control by putting in uh, look this toluene. Uh, this toluene, there's no place where toluene comes out. If you look at this this flow sheet as a whole. There's no. Uh, I mean initially. I mean initially. How much yeah, toluene? Yeah. So, so I think there, there'll have to be a makeup of toluene because there'll there will be some that comes out at B1 and there will be some that comes out at B2. You can't do perfect. You can't do perfect um, separations. And um, yeah, so depending on uh, how much comes in, you'll have to have a makeup. So you'd put uh, you'd put in the makeup probably here at S2. You'd probably put in the makeup from here going across to there into the stream. And I'm sure that you can change the amount of recycle of toluene because the toluene loop runs along here. And you can change the amount of recycle of toluene um, so that you get the right mixture occurring there that you land nicely on that, on that line. Okay, no, cool. Thanks. Good. Yeah, so this is the this is the um, the power of using um, of using ternary uh, plots of using uh, um, residue curves um, to make to break azeotropic uh, mixtures. Okay, so let's go on to the next way. There are two ways that you can do it, and and the one way is using liquid liquid equilibrium as we've done in this case to break azeotropic mixtures. And the other way is pressure swing, uh, pressure swing distillation. I did show you pressure swing distillation on one of our previous examples, but now we're going to go into it in a little bit more detail, but not in on a ternary diagram. We're going to be doing it uh, on a. Um, we're going to be doing it with uh, a binary 
with a binary comp a binary composition. So there's pure A, uh, pure B. There's pure A, and there is a feed. At a low pressure, the boiling points are lower. That's something you've come across in your in your uh, class test so far. The boiling points at this lower pressure are lower. So this is a lower pressure phase envelope. And so if you've got a feed that lies over here, you would be able to make a distillate D1 and a pure component, pure A, which has got a boiling point B1. Noting that this is a temperature TXY diagram. So that is the boiling point of pure A. And that is the first distillation column. We've got pure A and we make a distillate D1. Okay, so we don't take it through. It's possible to, to make a very tall distillation column with a lot of reflux and get to get to the azeotrope. Um, just to save cost, we don't have to go all the way. And we land up at D1. And D1 we use as the feed to a second distillation column at a higher pressure. So this is the phase envelope for an azeotrope at a higher pressure where the azeotrope itself lies at a different composition. Now, if you've got the F2 at this higher pressure, you can make pure, uh, pure B. Um, and it's got a boiling point at, at there on the, on the Y axis. And you can make this azeotrope that you don't have to go all the way to that azeotrope. You can stop it at D2. And D2, you want to recycle and mix with this, with this feed over here. So D2, my, uh, my internet is taking a little bit of time. I'm going to switch off the pointer. All right, I'm going to make a comment. Seems that my uh, internet has paused. I'm going to wait a bit. Grab my pointer again. Huh. Can anybody hear me? Oh, okay. Oh, there's my pointer. My pointer. Take long. Is that your pointer, Yaku Louis? No, sir. I can't point. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, there it disappears again. Okay, I'm going to... Oh, wow. There it goes. Ah, right. I think I've got it. Yes. By George, I've got it. Okay, so uh, let's carry on. Uh, so let's have a look at D2. D2 is that azeotrope that you're distilling from, pressure, from column 2. And we want to mix that with the feed... When you mix that composition, which is rich in A, with the feed, which is more rich in B, we get something in between F1. And it doesn't really matter whether we had F going into this first column or F1 going into that first column. We were still in the same distillation region. So at this pressure, at the lower pressure, this is a distillation region from B1 to, to that point. Is it is again the distillation region the same as we would have in a ternary uh, a distillation boundary the same as we would have in a in a in a ternary diagram in a residue curve diagram. So um, as long as when we mix D two with F, it's still in the same distillation region, we still have exactly the same flow sheet happening. And um, 
I, th I think so. So that's you can you can see immediately from the diagram because it's graphical. It's it becomes apparent what you need to do to achieve this. So let me have a look. Let me show you a different approach. We can have we can have column two as the first distillation column as well. So I'm going to draw in some lines. My favorite thing, drawing lines. So from F1, from F, what we can do is immediately go to the high pressure column. And from the high pressure column, we can make B2 and D2. And once you've got D2, we can mix it with the uh, with that feed, uh, and we would we would have F1 as the feed to the second distillation column, which is the low pressure one. And the low pressure one can make B1 and the azeotrope. No, I need that pointer again. The low pressure one can can make um, B1 and D1. And so it is possible to uh, to actually swap column one and column two, assuming that column one is the is is the low pressure column, column two is the high pressure column. We could have swapped them around, and we'd still achieve the same result. Has anybody got questions on this one? That is our last. That's no, not our last slide. No questions. Yeah, the Polka. Hello, Prof. Yeah. Uh, sorry to bother. So, but just to reiterate on the um, on the distillation columns, which one would come first in this instance? Would we go from pressure two to pressure one, seeing as pressure two is higher than pressure one, to adhere to the heuristics given in the notes? Yeah, that's a good question. In, yeah, yeah. It depends on what the feed is. So if the feed is high pressure, then yeah, you'd probably want to keep it at, keep it at high pressure so you don't have to pump. But remember that in distillation, the standard way of distilling is to make uh, liquids, not, not vapors. So from the reboiler, you'll take the liquid off the reboiler at the, dis at the, at the distillate, you're going to take the condensate, the liquid condensate. So all of these streams are liquids, and liquids you can change pressure readily without much uh, energy penalty. So generally, it doesn't matter that much, um, except this will be the bigger distillation column, and if it's um, uh, the D1 might have a, a a lower a lower boiling point than cooling water, in which case you've got to run this this you need to run the column at a higher pressure, and that's probably when you'd want to actually push up uh, do the do the high pressure one first. Only if D1 has got the, a low boiling point, in other words, it's quite volatile. Thank you very much, sir. Right, let's go on to the next one. So that was pressure stream distillation uh, with TXY curves. Here is another TXY curve for the dehydration of tetrahydrofuran. Um, and here yeah, the yeah the low pressure is the low temperatures. Remember, this is a TXY diagram. Um, Low pressure is is a uh, is a low temperature of the boiling of the mixture, and as you go to higher pressures, the temperature of the boiling gets higher, and the azeotrope is moving away. So the first one that you'd want to do uh, where it's fifty percent, fifty percent, fifty percent, you'd want to go at the one bar separation because that 
puts you well to the left. In other words, a very low fraction of, of H2O. Um, so water, this is pure water. It's got a higher boiling point than tetrahydrofuran. And so it is at the bottom of that column. So there's our feed coming in to the column. D1, it's at one bar pressure. And we're making pure water, which has got that boiling point. And we're going to make this azeotrope. So we'll land up somewhere around that point. 0.22, 22% uh, water in this mixture over there. There we go, 19% water. Right. Uh, we'll ignore the recycle S2 for now. We've got that water, and now we go to 10 bar pressure, and I'm going to start drawing my favorite lines again. We're starting at 19%, and we're going up to that point, 10 bar pressure, and we're in a new distillation region. Get my pointer again, we're in a new distillation region, and we can make that azeotrope there, and we can make pure tetrahydrofuran over there. So there's the pure tetrahydrofuran. It's got a higher boiling point there. The temperature is higher for tetrahydrofuran than it is for the azeotrope. So the tetrahydrofuran comes to the bottom of the distillation column. The azeotrope goes to the top. And there we've got 33% water. And, we, and therefore, we won't mix it with the 50% water. We'll simply put it in higher up on the distillation column where, where the approximate composition inside that distillation column is about 33% water. Remember, water is getting less uh, uh, there's less, less and less water in the, in, the, in the makeup as we go higher and higher up until there's only 20% water over there. So when we've got 33% water, it will be somewhere in that distillation column when we put it into that distillation column at that point. And uh, when we do that, it means that instead of having, let me put so another, this is the, I'll put in the feed line. Oops, why is it not drawing lines? Because I haven't chosen lines. Okay. Uh, so that's the feed. Um, and then if we go to this uh, recycle, the recycle will be will be over here. 33%. We mix that inside the distillation column. We mix that with, uh, with the feed. And what we get is the is the the new feed as a comp as a composite that goes into that distillation column is something close to the to the original feed because this is the original feed let me just get my pointer again the original feed is you've already taken off the water which is 50 percent so the flow rate of this s2 is relatively small therefore the composition of the recycle mixed with water that doesn't actually mix but if you put these two together as a composite feed it lies somewhere over there it lies close to the original feed okay and that's pretty much pressure swing distillation and now we can go on uh, to the last slide and that's just a summary you should be able to sketch residue curves on a ternary phase diagram, be able to define the range of possible product compositions uh, given a certain feed composition and the tertiary phase diagram. You should be able to define the process flow diagram for a heterogeneous azeotropic distillation system. So it's this thing of having a look at a, at a residue curve map and from that residue curve map, uh, understanding what how that will translate into process flow diagram for separation and be able to define the process flow diagram for a pressure swing distillation system 
Right, so, um, so to, I'm going to post straight after this lecture, I'll post the TAT for tomorrow so that you can go through it in the meantime. And then tomorrow uh, I'll just field questions uh, for that TAT. I won't even require the, um, I won't even require the TAs to come in. So we'll all go into the same session and we can discuss the TAT. Okay, I'm going to switch off recording.